The Jamon period comprises the archaeological record of Japan's Holocene Stone Age. Jamon people were some of the earliest people in the world to use pottery. Despite being hunter-gatherers, they often lived in large, complex villages. During the transition from the Paleolithic to the Jamon period, people began to stop using blade and core stone tool technology in favor of bifacial stone tool technology around 15,000 years ago. In this video, I flint-napped a tanged bifacial projectile point from the incipient Jamon era and talk about the archaeological record of this time in Japan. In order to make my reproduction of a bifacial tanked point, I begin with a long, narrow flake of obsidian. Obsidian was one of the materials utilized by incipient Jamon peoples for flint napping and is prized for its consistency and sharpness. Using a hammer stone and a moose antler billet, I strike off flakes to remove irregularities and begin thinning the piece of obsidian. The Paleolithic era marks the earliest occupation of Japan by people, around 38,000 years ago during the Pleistocene Epoch. The earliest phase of terminal Pleistocene people in Japan used a flint napping technique called microblade technology. This technique involves setting up a chunk of flint called a core with successive flake removals that results in flakes being long, relatively straight, and having parallel edges. These long blades, also called microblades, lamellar blades, or prismatic blades depending on the context, are razor sharp. They make great tools and were also modified into more complex tools. Terminal Pleistocene people in Japan used blades to make cutting tools, gravers, scrapers, sharp edge inserts for organic projectile points, and much more. As the climate changed with the Pleistocene, Holocene Epoch transition, people changed their technology to cope with changing environmental conditions. They began making bifacial tools, and gradually blades became a less dominant aspect of their flint napping technology. Bifacial tools are made by removing flakes from both faces of a piece of flint or other nappable rock until the desired form is created. The earliest Jamon bifacial tools were large bifacial leaf-shaped blades. This style is followed by tanged bifacial points, like the one I'm making. The change in projectile point technology accompanied other changes in lithic tools and also other material culture. With the piece of obsidian I'm flint napping covered in the stars from previous flake removals, I strike off more refined flakes to thin the piece. At this stage, the edge is more regular, and the biface could be used as a cutting tool if need be. Tanged bifacial points were made during the incipient Jamon era beginning around 15,000 years before present to 9,500 years before present. Besides the range of other stone tools, people during this time are also known for producing a type of pottery known as linear relief pottery. Linear relief refers to the decoration on the exterior of these ceramic vessels. Rare instances of the linear relief pottery were large. One large example from an incipient Jamon site had a mouth diameter of 42 centimeters and could hold approximately 16 liters of liquid. These incipient Jamon people also produced axes and adzes for woodworking. These were chipped out of stone, then ground against coarse rock until they were polished, which gave them a smoother cutting edge and made them more resilient. Other stone tools they produced included flake knives, scrapers, cores, and more. Out of rock that wasn't flint napped, these Jamon people produced grinding tools for processing nuts into an edible meal.
tanged points were carefully finished with a flint napping technique called pressure flaking. On well-made examples of these projectile points, this was done in a pattern called oblique parallel pressure flaking by archaeologists. Curiously, depending on what geographic region of Japan they occur in, the flaking on these points tends to be in different directions. Tanged points from southern Japan are almost exclusively flaked from the upper right to the lower left while points from the northern region are almost always flaked from the upper left to the lower right. Bifacial tank point industry tools were made on a regular cores and the flakes produced by them. These tank points have forms which have been divided into multiple types that vary with stem length, form, shoulder shape, and so on. Some examples are shorter and have triangular shaped blades while others are more elongated. Earlier, terminal Pleistocene people who used blade core technology almost exclusively flitnapped a stone called Silicious Hard Shale. This material was an important lithic resource during the Jamon era, but was more heavily exploited by blade industry peoples who went to great distances to acquire it, sometimes over 200 kilometers. Bifacial stemmed point industry peoples used more local stone sources and seemed to have no preference for material type. They made bifacial tanged points and other tools out of materials including silicious shale, obsidian, shale, chert, silicified tuff, jasper, rhyolite, andesite, hornfells, and diabase. Since the microblade groups use silicious shale almost exclusively, they use their lithics in an economical fashion. Since later, bifacial stemmed groups used abundant local sources of stone, they were no longer required to use toolstone sources economically. Now that the preform for my tanged point has an even regular cross section, I begin with pressure flaking. Since obsidian is a brittle and easily worked material, my pressure flakes are easy to remove in a consistent pattern. All of this pressure flaking not only produces a thin sharp edge, but also allows me to shape the point closer to the desired outline. The incipient Jamon people constructed pit houses for their dwellings, evidence in the archaeological record by the pits themselves, post holes, and a living surface. These range in size. At one site, they were divided into two types of dwellings, small ones measuring 4 meters square and larger ones measuring 12 meters square. At some sites, features have been found that are more ephemeral than these pit houses and are interpreted as short-use summer dwellings. Concentrations of burned rocks are often found at these habitation sites, which are the remains of hot rock cooking. A type of cooking feature called a ventilated hearth by regional archaeologists can be found at incipient Jimon sites. These consisted of open pit hearths with an underground sloping flue. Ventilated hearths are thought to have been used for smoking meat and are found at a number of sites. Deer, boar, antelope, and bear are the medium to large sized mammals people from this time would have hunted, probably with tanged points affixed to spears or spear thrower darts. They would have hunted small terrestrial mammals as well. Fish, both fresh and salt water, would have presented a good source of calories. Archaeologists know that tree nuts were an important source of food during this period. When harvested, Jamon people would use storage pits to save quantities of nuts to be consumed at a later date. The linear incised pottery that incipient Jamon people made would have allowed them to make efficient use of this food source by boiling it. Additionally, Jamon people foraged for a number of other plant foods. The distinct part of these projectile points, the tang, is traded by pressure flaking in the same area near the base until it grows narrower. The tang is what would have allowed ancient hunters to secure the point into a haft 
for a spear or dart. I also flatten up the tang to be thinner than the rest of the piece in order to make it easier to fit into a haft. Once I am satisfied with how the tang looks, I can pressure flake the blade to its final shape and sharpen the tip and edges. People who made these tamed points in ancient Japan were mobile hunter-gatherers, but did not move great distances as part of an annual cycle like their blade core using predecessors. Over the course of the terminal Pleistocene, people became more sedentary, changed their lithic technology to be more expedient and less efficient, and increasingly used pottery, plant processing tools, and semi-permanent dwellings. The pattern of relative sedentism by hunter-gatherers set by the people who made tamed by facial points persisted throughout the rest of the Jamon period. Thank you.